What's up everyone and welcome to another uh, Art of War reviewing um, event results. Uh, we do this every Monday. Uh, normally it's Nick, but Nick is currently in California. He just got back from, is getting back right now after competing in the California Cup, which was another awesome event. And he's gonna be talking about that next week, next Monday. So today you have me and my lovely self on this glorious November morning, as we're gonna be talking about the Flames of Autumn GT 2023, which, if you didn't read the title or the graphic or anything, was won by Mark Hurtel and three Land Raiders, which I think is an awesome list, and I'm actually really excited to talk about it. Um, so before that, if you're new, if you're just joining us for the first time, hello, welcome, we're Art of War. We are a competitively focused YouTube and podcast network. Um, we also have a really awesome subscription service called The War Room, um, where we post a bunch of additional content, including... Uh, two additional battle reports every week. Um, you can find a link down below. It's the warroom.bhx.tv. There's a three-day free trial right now if you want to go ahead and test it out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. So uh, if you haven't done one of, seen one of these uh, reviews before, what I'm basically going to be doing first, I'm going to go through the top 10 performing lists. At this particular event, the top 10 players all went at least X and 1, or in case of Mr. Hertel, they went 5 and 0. Um, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to break down what they're trying to do, what the thought composition behind is, and then after that we're going to be talking about the event as a whole, we're going to talk about the missions, we're going to talk about terrain placing and, and FAQs and see how any of those things affected it, and then last we're going to talk about pairings, we're going to see who played who, what kind of crazy shenanigans um, we're up to at this event, and uh, what was the story behind Triple Land Raider and Mark Hurtel's awesome, amazing victory. All right. Oh, yeah, as chat says, uh, do the YouTube things and like, comment, subscribe. That's what everyone says. That's what I'm going to say. Um, let's just go ahead and dive right into this. Let's review the first list. So first of all, we have Land Raiders for Days. This is Mark Hurtel's Space Marine list. This is the, li the list that won. Um, it is an Ultramarines Gladius. We start off with an Apothecary Biologist with Fire Discipline, previously known as Bolter Discipline. Um, which gives his unit sustained hits, and if they're in Devastator Doctrine, it gives his unit critical hits on fives. The Apothecary Biologist, if you don't know, gives his unit lethal hits already, which means for those of you keeping score at home, his unit now has lethal and sustained hits, and in Devastator Doctrine, lethal and sustained hits on fives. If only there was a unit that he was really good at joining. We'll find out. Additionally, we have a Lieutenant with Combi Open with Artificer Armor. So Artificer Armor, this is the kind of enhancement you'd give if you have 10 points left over, and I would go out on a limit to probably what happened here. The Lieutenant with Combi Open is awesome. He's a low op that moves if you get near him. He has a base 5 of pain. low pain. Um, he's got like a Combi Open, which you don't care about. But most importantly, at the beginning of uh, the game, he picks one objective in midfield, and your whole army gets real ones to wound. Um against models on that objective. So pretty cheap loan up, it also comes with an awesome ability, he's pretty sick. All right, um, additionally, we have Marnius Calgar. Uh, Marnius Calgar is kind of pricey at 185, but boy howdy is he awesome. He's got like eight attacks at 833 twin length, I'm pretty sure, might be six attacks. He has a lot of attacks at, at high strength, high AP and damage three with twin length. Um, additionally, he has a 4-up Mule Pain while his Victrix Honor Guard are alive, and the Victrix Honor Guard themselves have a 2-up save and a 4-up Invalm, which means they're quite tanky into things that would normally kill aggressors. Most importantly, Marnius Calgar gives you a CP every turn, and uh, he lets his unit fall back, shoot, and advance and charge. Um, so just gives him a ton of mobility, he's really awesome. And he and the Apothecary of Biologus are going to join the same unit. They're going to join the Aggressor Squad, and it's going to be super rock and awesome. Additionally, there's a squad of six Blade Guard veterans, a squad of three Centurion Devastators, which I thought Centurions were bad for a while. I was actually really impressed by them. They each come with um, a Laz Cannon, and then what did he give them? Give them Grav Cannons. So a bunch of damage three anti-vehicle shooting. Um, and then the Centurion Missile Launchers are also pretty good. Then there's one, two squads of Inceptors. Inceptors are awesome because they can show up three inches away. Um, they both have Bolters, so a bunch of shots of damage too. Um, and then we're going to get to the fun part of this list. One Land Raider with Laz Cannons, two Land Raider Redeemers with Flamestorm Cannons, and the Calidus Assassin. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and talk about the Land Raider Redeemer because this thing is so fun. You get a multi melta and a Hunter Killer Missile and a Twin Assault Cannon, and those things are cool. You also can transport like 16 dudes of whatever you want. But most importantly, oh, it also moves 12. Most importantly, you get the Twin Flamestorm Cannons, which are 12 inch range, D6 plus 3 shots each, so 2D6 plus 6, at 622 Torrent ignores cover. These things roast anything. Additionally, they're the, like the best Overwatch target in the game, because if anything moves nearby, you just have one TP shoot twice. Um, and they're a transport with assault ramps, which means the transport can move and the guys can get out, then they can charge. Um, so you put your aggressors inside of it, then it rumbles at your opponent, then it shoots them and they die, then you get out and you shoot them with the aggressors and then they die. That's more or less what this list is trying to do. And you have three of those things and they're all really hard to kill. Um, and this Calgar squad goes inside the Land Raiders, it's probably also having one Centurion squad in one and the Blade Guard in another, and you just kind of rumble at your opponent. This list does not have a lot of stuff, but it does have a lot of awesome. Um, I think it probably has some weaknesses, especially if you can kill all the like Inceptors and Kalidus early, then you're pretty much down to just Land Raiders. Um, but if you manage to overwhelm your opponent, um, it can be really difficult to deal with three land raiders, especially since you can armor contempt one, you can put them on cover, and then if you're AP4, you still get a four up save. Um, you can put three land raiders in their face and then have the Calgar squad get out and charge them, and it's a lot. Um, it really is a lot. So that's probably what this was trying to do. But uh, all in all, mad props to Mark Hurtel. Um, awesome pilot, awesome list, and congratulations on winning. All right. So up next, the person who got second place here is Jeffrey Kalodner. And I actually had the fortune of playing Jeffrey um, at the GW Tampa Open a couple of weeks ago when he cut through John and then me and then Jack in short order. And I don't think this list has changed at all. And I thought it was bad. There's videos of me on this very channel saying sisters are terrible, but it turns out they're not. They're actually quite good. And I was wrong and I will eat those words as I ate my loss to Jeffrey. And it seems here that he went four and one, got second place. So very consistent showing, um, really an excellent, excellent 40K player with a very strong list. So what is in this exciting um, uh, sisters list, let's go ahead and get over it. Uh, Jeffrey here has names for all of his characters and a lot of his vehicles and stuff, which I personally think is really cool. I'm, I'm actually kind of a big fan of the lore of this game. Before I started recording this video, I was reading uh, The End of the Death Volume 2 because it just came out. Um, no spoilers, but it is awesome, so you should go read it. Um, anyways, what do we have? We have an Imagifier. We have Junith. I'm not going to try and pronounce her last name. We have Morven Vol, we have a Palatine with the Blade of St. Eleanor, and then St. Celestine. So the Imagifier gives you some cool extra miracle dice. Uh, Junith gives you CP, and it's just kind of annoying. Um, I think the Imagifier also gives a unit of 4-up involved. So there's a squad of Battle Sisters that's got a 4-up involved and is kind of annoying to kill. Morven Vol gives her unit 4-year-olds to hit and wound, which is pretty dope. Um, and then the Palatine hits really hard. So the big thing about her is if she's wounded, she can like do mortals in addition and she gets plus one to hit and plus one to wound. And so she's a character with a specific shot where she can come back to life. So if you kill her, she can come back to life with one wound remaining. Then she kind of goes super sane and is like, I'm strength five and damage three and I have a million attacks and they all do mortals in addition and I have plus one to hit and plus one to wound and she's dope. She's also like 65 points, so awesome. Um, and then Saint Celestine is just cool. Um, I like it a lot. She comes back to life as well. So there's a lot of coming back to life here, which is pretty pretty dope. There's three squads of Battle Sisters. Battle Sisters are really good, <laughs> if you didn't know. Um, one squad's gonna have a four-up involved from that Imagifier. It's probably also gonna be joined by Junith. Um, I think, pretty sure. I played Jeffrey a while ago. If that's wrong, I'm sorry. Um, and most importantly, they give you a, a miracle die if you're on an objective. The other big thing about them is they have a 3 of armor save and a 6 of pinfall save, which doesn't sound like a lot since their toughness 3 one wound bodies. Um, but the fact of the matter is that since they have Miracle Dice, it takes more effort than it is worth it to kill a squad of Battle Sisters. So killing 5 of them is actually really annoying because they basically pass the first save every time because Sisters, unlike Eldar, get an absolute torrent of Miracle Dice 
You get so many of them. It feels like every unit, every time it activates or takes a save has a miracle die. I know it's not actually how it works, but it's what it feels like because you get so many of them. And for sisters, it's one per unit per phase, not one per phase. But yeah, no, sisters are, battle sisters are good. They're also quite cheap. They're OC2, they go around and they hold objectives and they're kind of annoying to kill because you can do the math in your head and you say, this, is sh this should kill five battle sisters. But then all of a sudden, they make two invulnerables, they miracle die the last one, and there's one girl left, and then she caps a point, and then she's awesome. It's kind of how that works. And that one time is not that bad, but that happens every single time. So you have to consistently dedicate more resources than you think to killing any one unit. And since you just have so many units, you eventually get run and bled dry. Well, they score a bunch of points. There are two emulators in here and a squad of rats with multi meltas, just efficient transports and some good multi guns. Um, multi meltas aren't awesome on their own, but when one multi melta out of every squad either hits or wounds or is damage six with miracle dice, they start to really do add up. Additionally, there's two cascaders, which are just very solid tanks. They're AP one, they ignore cover, they're damage three, um, and they're real hits against vehicles and they have a lot of shots. So they're great tanks. Um, additionally, there's two mortifiers, which are just efficient, um, like dudes that just go out and they die. The big thing is just this has a million units um, and the units, whenever they die, they get miracle dice and the battle sisters all have simulacrums. So if they use a the miracle die, they get a new one. And then the Imagifier, I think it's the Imagifier, might be one of the other characters, um, lets you set dice to six um, if they something dies nearby, but you get a ton of miracle dice. So everything's kind of annoying to kill. Everything hits a little bit harder than it should. And this army doesn't look awesome on paper, but it really is like an army by committee where more than any other army in 40k right now, sisters are way better than the sum of their parts, right? No sisters unit on its own is that awesome, but together they're a lot more than they should be. Paragon war suits. Uh, these things are just good. I've played two games in the sisters this edition and they have been absolute monsters both times. The key is you really can't run them at your opponent, right? If your plan is to deploy them on the line and you say, I'm gonna run, run these at you, then they just die because they're only four wounds each. You get one miracle die, whatever. So what you do is you basically keep them really safe and they pop out in the late game when your opponent doesn't want to dedicate a bunch of resources to them. Um, they hit a flank really hard. They take a like a, like a backline corner and they kind of walk on and take, and take an objective. So there's a game in the war room right now if you want to check it out between my Jukari and John's sister's battle. And here in this unit of three Paragon War Suits and... Um, Morphin Vol, and it came on like turn three in a weird corner in the strat reserves that I forgot to screen out. And it walked on, it shot one of my, I think it shot a Voider and Bomber to death, and then it like charged something else and took an objective. And then at that point in the game, I really didn't have the resources to kill it because I had to spend so many resources killing other units. Um, so it's it's good, it's not that expensive. It punches, it can tank shock really well because one guy has the War Mace. Um, then it... Uh, can shoot too. And the real sits and wounds actually means the unit goes farther than it should. Um, there's five Seraphim, which are cheap. You can join them to sell soon or not. There's a squad of 10 Sisters and Vitiates, which are just 10 dudes or 10 girls, I should say. Um, again, you get a miracle die when they die. They have six Ben Vol, which is annoying to kill. Um, and then two Death Cult Assassins. Story about these Death Cult Assassins. When Jeffrey and I played, he had one Death Cult Assassin live in combat in my backfield for three turns, I think, because every time I activated, I would always hand it exactly one save. Um, and it got kind of funny. I would always hand it exactly one save and they would always pass it with a miracle die. And it got really annoying because they were just like an idiot in my backfield with a six of Invuln and I couldn't kill it. And I hated it. And also 35 unit that shows up and like pushes a button and then dies. If it's exposed to more than one shot. Um, also, there's a Caldus Assassin. Caldus is a good. There's a the fact that sec first and second place both ran one. Okay, so that is our first and second list. I promise I will spend less time on them as we go through, but I want to give top three their due because they did an awesome job. So real congratulations to these top three people. Okay, Tyler Principio with Alpha Legion. We have Abadabadu, which is an interesting choice. So one thing we've been seeing a lot, especially in Europe and even here, is that a lot of CSM players are moving away from Abaddon. And instead, you'd expect um, that, lore, that that HQ slot to be filled with um, three lords to go in the chosen bricks that are probably gonna be coming. Um, but we don't have that. We have Abaddon, the Despoiler, one Chaos Lord, the Demon Hammer. He's really dope, really dope. 
And then um, two dark communes. So I think I know where this one's going. There's a squad of cultists, one squad of legionaries. Um, so they're just kind of trash. I don't see two. Cultists sticky objectives. They're pretty cool. Then Maxacris cultists, Maxacris cultists, minimum squad of... Sorry. Maximum squad of chosen. So the meat of this list right here um, is... Uh, Two Accursed Cultist Bricks that Abaddon joins and gives them a 4-up invuln. And let me tell you, these things are so much more annoying to kill than you want them to be. You look at them and you're like, it's 16, guys. How hard can this be? And then you start shooting them. And they all have a 4-up invuln and they all have a field of pain. And if you shoot them with a last cannon, they take it on the one wound guys. And if you shoot it with like a last gun, they take it on the three wound guys. There's not an efficient way to attack this unit. And then, whoopsie daisy, you didn't kill it. Well, I regrow forward, then I advance and charge, and I'm in your grill, and I'm charging you, and I have a bunch of damage to attacks, and I am undivided, so I real hits and wounds, and my friend over there, he's Nurgle, so you can't shoot me, and it's just really annoying. They're annoying. Abaddon gives them a four pin only return. Um, it's great. They're so hard to kill. And then the Dark Communes give them a, um, a five up involved if Abaddon's not nearby. The Chosen Squad just hits really hard. If you have not been um, punched by um, Chosen before, don't. It's my advice as uh, the person with the, the pulpit right now on this, on this fancy Warhammer YouTube channel. Um, don't get punched by Chosen. They hurt. They'll kill your avatar in one turn, and then you'll be really sad. There's also squad of bikers. These guys go up and down. Um, one undivided, one Nurgle Forge Fiend, and then a Rhino for those chosen. Additionally, there's just some trash here in the form of Celeski. Celeski is awesome. Um, she gets back up. She's damaged in combat. She has a really cool flamer with death wounds. Um, she's a really great rapid ingress target. The one downside to her, however, is she has two ticks on both Bring It Down and Assassinate. Which means if your opponent doubles up, Celeski is worth 16 points if they kill her twice by herself. So there's a lot of people who are not taking Celeski just for that reason. But obviously she's still an amazing piece. So really solid um, <laughs> Bing Bong. I love army lists. This is great. Um, I love army list names, I should say. Um, so pretty solid TSM list. Um, a little bit different than what we've been seeing really commonly, which is these like MSU versions, but Accursed Cultists are really good. Uh, Manny Chima just did really well at the LGT with a whole bunch of Accursed Cultists. All right, so up next, we're going to go in four through seven. Matt Shuckman, a um, fellow Art of War coach and Team America's Eldar player. Congrats to getting forward. Fourth, so Whaley, Burke, Kane, Farseer, Fugan, Yinkarn. Pretty standard double avatar build here. Notably, there's no spirits here, which means there's not going to be any Wraith Guard, and especially since we see Fate's Messengers here on the Autark. Um, double Prism, which is a little bit um, out of the ordinary. Then one Night Spinner, two squads of Shadow Spectres, War Walkers, and one squad of Warp Spiders. This list is interesting. Matt and I actually talked quite a bit um, about this list before he submitted it. Um, he and I talk pretty frequently. And he's not super big on Triple Night Spinner for the same reason that I am. Um, and that is, when you have Triple Night Spinner, a lot of really good players recognize the fact that if you want to play a five-turn game, you're going to have this massive advantage because you can shoot them with Night Spinners for five turns. So they're like, cool, well, I want to give you a little value out of your Night Spinners as possible, so we're going to grapple in the mud, John Wick, pencil, knife fight style, turn one or turn two. And the Night Spinners don't really do anything then. Um, and Fire Prisms do. Um, there's a lot of tanks in this meta, and especially there's a lot of transports. Um, and Fire Prisms are pretty good at popping things like Forge Fiends, they're really good at popping things like Rhinos, Impulsors, anything like that. And that, like, 10 to 12 wound bracket, that's, like, Toughness 9, because you have two shots that hit on threes re-rolling, that wound on threes re-rolling. So, they're quite solid, you can still Prism Fire through them. I think they're just a little bit too expensive, I'd rather have the Night Spinner, but, you know, such is life. Um, additionally... Um, Matt does not have Wraith Guard, which I think are the best unit in the game, and I think is a mistake. Um, but obviously he did really well, he got fourth place here. Um, and Double Avatar is still a super strong build. So if that's more your flavor of Eldar Brokenness, by all means you should go ahead and run it. Alright. Then we have a CSM list, which is another pretty off-the-wall CSM list that I think is dope. One Chaos Lord, one Dark Apostle, one Master of Executions, and Fabius Bile. No Abaddon, no three lords here. 
Um, and this is, whose list is this? This is Benjamin Millark's list. Congratulations to Benjamin. There's a big squad of Legionaries, a big squad of Legionaries, a big squad of Chosen, another big squad of Chosen, little squad of Noise Marines, little squad of Noise Marines, a big squad of Raptors, big squad of Raptors, Warp Talons, Rhino, Rhino, Triple Nurglings. This list is so many guys. It is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75 Space Marine bodies, some of which are two wounds, some of which have a, um, a five of Invuln, some of which move 12, some, a lot of which can go inside the Rhinos. It just like floods the board with guys that all hit harder than they should because a Space Marine doesn't hit that hard. But when you give that Space Marine some kind of chain sword, now he's like five attacks at AP1, and he gets lethal and sustained, and he has four rolls to hidden wounds, and there's a Lord nearby, and he has armor of contempt, all of a sudden it really starts to add up, and those little Legionnaires can just like walk over and kill like a rhino or something. And have you ever tried to like kill 75 Space Marines? I promise you it is harder than you think it is. <laughs> because a lot of lists are teching for things like tanks right now, and you're like, I have two bright lances and a fire prism and a night spinner. And that does not kill 75 Space Marines. No, sir, it does not. Um, okay. So that is this list. I just want to point out that we're on list number five here, fifth place here. And I haven't seen something that I would call super traditional. I think the closest I would see right now is um, uh, Shuckman's uh, Eldar list, but even that is not that traditional. Double Avatar has kind of fallen out of favor and there's no Wraith Guard there, so it's pretty unique. Okay, Sean Reynolds Eldzari, Wayleaver with the Phoenix Gem, Kane, Farseer, Spiritseer, Incarn, so another Double Avatar list. Then you've got two Night Spinners, one Squad of Shrouds, Swooping Hawks, Swooping Hawks, Swooping Hawks, Wraith Guard. The streak has been broken, my friends. Only the good data sheets. Yeah, wow. Um, this list only has one Farseer. It's only two Night Spinners. It's a little bit different than mine, but it uh, basically burned those points and turned them into the Incarn. It's real good, you guys. It's just real good. Big thumbs up. Good job, Sean. I like your list. Matt Laura. I've seen this one before. It's actually really interesting. So Matt Laura, um, he beat me at LVO 2022 in the Shadow Round. Yeah, that was it. So I'm excited to see what he did. Kind of kept tabs on him since then. He has an awesome list name. Metal Old Man Yells at Sky. Good job, Matt. You're, you're, you did a good job there. Um, what do we got? We got a Hexmark Destroyer, we got a Locust Lord, we got an Overlord, and we got a Technomancer. So pretty standard smattering of Necron characters. Then I wonder if there's going to be like some warriors or something in here. Let's find out. Canoptic Reanimator. Okay, pretty standard. Triple Tomb Sentinel. What does a Tomb Sentinel do? I don't actually know. And we're going to look it up for you live on the air. I don't know why. Triple Tomb Sentinel. Tomb Sentinel. The app is awesome, by the way. So it's Toughness 9. It's got 9 wounds and a 4 up invuln, 3 up save. Um, it has an Exile Cannon, which is D6 plus 1 shots at 10 2, 2 hitting on 4s. Then 6 attacks, hitting on 4s at 6 0, 1. Um, if it's on an objective marker, it has Armor of Contempt and plus 1 AP. This thing's not bad for 115. Okay, yeah, I, I can see it. Triple Tomb Sentinel. Good job. Interesting choice there. I like how it's kind of off the wall. Canoptic Wraiths. Canoptic Wraiths. Okay, pretty standard. Or actually, not not anymore. It's okay, we got Wraith and Tomb Sentinel. So we're going for the um, the Wraith theme here, I see. Crypto Thralls. Okay. Uh, Flayed Ones. Three Locust Heavy Destroyers. Three Locust Heavy Destroyers. Lich Guard. Ophidians. Ophidians. So very non-standard Necron list. It's got a whole bunch of things that run around and do stuff, but not a lot of the big bricks. Only one of the big bricks. And then a bunch of... Trash units that are all more more annoying to kill than they should be, and all hit pretty hard. I really like these Tomb Sentinels, actually, because they're very durable into the indirect stuff we've been seeing lately, and stuff like Tomb Blades are not. 
Tomb Blades, Dive Knife Spinners, and Whirlwinds, these things don't because they heal and their toughness 9, which is a massive breakpoint into Knife Spinners and um, Whirlwinds. And the Armor Contempt helps a lot into the Iron Stone Whirlwinds we've been seeing a lot. So I actually really like this list. I think it has a lot of legs. Or, <laughs> it has it has a lot of legs because if you don't know these are centipede things. I'll see myself out now. Anyway, good job, Matt Laura, with a really crazy, awesome Necrom list. So right now, we are... Um, Five for seven on really awesome lists out of this GT, with the slackers here being these Eldar players. My fellow Eldar players, where are your Falcons? Where are your crazy Aspect Warriors? Where's the 150 Storm Guardians? Come on, we gotta represent you guys. Um, Sasha Edelkraut. Let's find out. I love Sasha. He and I just played at Tampa. Um, you played in the Shadow Round as well, when it got really dark and we had to play via our phone flashlights. Imperial Fists, as always. I, Sasha loves his Imperial Fists. And if you don't know, Sasha Edelkraut's Imperial Fist Army is one of the prettiest armies I have ever seen in my entire life. It is gorgeous. Anyway, Captain in Phobos Armor. What a start here. Darnath Lysander, solo Lysander is amazing and you cannot convince me otherwise. He runs around, he's got a damage three hammer with devastating wounds. He's got a two up involved in combat once a game. He's annoying to kill, he's 100 points, he rapid ingresses and he kills your avatar. You'll notice I have a lot of pain about people killing my avatar. Anyway, Lysander killed him. Um, Librarian and Phobos Armor, so this is the guy that gives you loan up. Quentin, if you didn't know, this event was a test for roll for someone else. Um, well, that's scary. Worlds is going to be hard, you guys. I'm kind of afraid. Anyway, let's get back to Sasha's awesome list. He's got an impulsor. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a Firestorm Assault Force. So I have to say that now. One squad of Centurion Assault Squads. Another Centurion Assault Squad. One, two, three Eliminators, one squad of Eradicators, two squad of Eradicators, three squads of Eradicators, Inceptors, 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 Infiltrators, Infiltrators, Scouts, Scouts. This is so many things. This is so many things. There's a whole bunch of Scouts here and Infiltrators, which are just like around to push buttons. The Inceptors shoot surprisingly hard, um, and they, like, show up, um, really close to you, so they get the angles they need to. They're also really great for mission play, and one thing I've been seeing really good players do a lot with them lately is they've been really using them to block out the board. A lot of, um, lists have tilted towards putting, um... A lot of things in reserve, especially CSM and Tau and Eldari and things like that. And being able to be like, you don't get to put any of the stuff anywhere nearby um, means uh, that you can really dictate how those things have to show up, especially since this list doesn't have anything super durable. I'm really interested to see why Sasha chose the um, Firestorm when it doesn't have any transports, and there's a lot of transport synergy with. Um, that was only one impulsor here, and I think the only thing I can go inside of it is these eliminators. Sasha's a really good player, so I'm sure there's some really awesome um, combo here that I, I'm not like super versed on because I don't really play Space Marines that much. Um, my experience comes from playing against them mostly um, and playing the White Wolves. Um, but I I'm excited to see what this. Let's does if Sasha brings it to Worlds. Because I don't know. I get there's a lot of stuff, but like I feel like it's missing something. Anyways. All right. Um, lastly, we have ninth place, uh, Necrons. Um, this is Lee Bra Brady. Uh, we've got a Catacomb Command Barge, a Lord, a Lord, a Technomancer, another Technomancer, the Silent King, and the Transatic Catan. So the Transit of Catan with Sempaternal Weave is the most annoying thing to kill the game, hands down. Um, additionally, there is the Silent King, who is actually really good because let's ignore modifiers. Um, and there's two Technomancers, two Lords, so I'm going to guess two big squads of stuff. There is um, a Canoptic Reanimator, Crypto Thralls, Crypto Thralls, two squads of Lich Guards. So there's two big bricks here, two squads of Tomb Blades, 
and then um, a bunch of support for the two big bricks. Pretty standard Necrom list. It just wants to control the middle, and boy howdy, does it never die. If you ever tried to shoot at that Catan, like, don't. Because it's not worth it. You'll never kill it. That's been my experience anyways. And then last, but certainly not least, we have Zach Hilt's Blood Angels. Um, uh, Captain and Gravis Armor. Um, Librarian and Phobos Armor. And the Sanguinor. The Sanguinor is cracked. So if you don't know, he deep strikes, but he can appear in combat if someone charges you. So say you have some dudes out and they charge you and the Sanguinor is like, I'm up here now on the other side of the unit so no one can get me back and then dead. He hits really hard. He also falls back and charges natively. He's pretty dope. Um, there's an aggressor squad, a centurion assault squad, an eradicator squad, another eradicator squad, a third eradicator squad, um, inceptors, infiltrators, infiltrators, a landed or a deemer, a librarian, dead knot, a scout squad, a scout squad, and another scout squad. So scout squads are awesome because they have infiltrate and scout, and they're just really good at um, um, moving around the table. They also can go back into reserves. This list is, it doesn't look like a lot of stuff, but it's actually super awesome. This librarian dreadnought lets you uh, teleport units around the table, um, which can be used on like inceptors or eradicators if you want to go and shoot something, or the aggressor brick with um, the captain, or the centurion assault squad if you want to try and like go bang a nine or something. It's just like a really efficient thing. Um, obviously the land raider redeemer is really dope. It's just really good. I talked a lot about that before. Um, yeah, it's just a good list. It is a Firestorm Assaults Force, so all the stuff gets plus one um, strength. Or Yeah, and then um, the Land Raider Demon really comes in its own because there's a lot of synergy with um, transports. Um, chat, I didn't mean to hate on meta lists. My world's list is Triple Knight Spinners and an Avatar and Farseers and Wraith Guard. It was, it was more of a comment on um, the fact that we have a whole bunch of really crazy lists at this particular GT. Not the fact that you're any less of a player if you don't run something, if you're running something on meta because it's on meta because it's good and it's a tournament and like I do that all the time. You can look at my, win resu my event results. They're not very intuitive ever. Um, all right. So that is the top 10 list in this crazy, crazy Flames of Autumn GT. Let's go ahead and talk about some pairings. Let's talk about, oh, hold on, real quick, overview. Um, if you look at the player packet, um, so they're gonna be using the um, the uh, World Champion FAQ, World Championships FAQ, so that's the one they're gonna be using at Worlds, so stuff like you can't get out of a transport, you can use CP reroll on a strat you can use twice, on an ability you can use twice, so like a captain ability lets you use two CP rerolls, um, things like that. Additionally, um, they were using the um, Leviathan Tournament Companions um, list uh, packet. So pretty standard um, stuff. A lot of what you've been seeing in the 40k community right now. Tables and Towers in Maryland, so around the DC area. Um, those guys are all awesome. So if you're in this area, I encourage you to check out the Flames of Autumn event, maybe next year. Okay, let's talk about Mark Rattel's path to the top. So round one, he played John Bush. What was John Bush running? Eldar, ooh, let's find out. Avatar, Kane, and the Incarn. Fire Dragons, but no Fugin. Interesting. Night Spinner, Night Spinner, Shadow Spectre, Shadow Spectre, Swooping Hawks, Swooping Hawks, War Walker, War Walker, uh, Warp Spiders. So double Avatar, no Wraith Guard. Pretty standard Eldar list. Um, Fire Dragons, by the way. A really good anti-tank. I am considering taking them to world. Um, I have a list in my phone called Bad Dragons. It's got Fugin and a bunch of Fire Dragons and Falcons, and it's been really good. It has some problems, but it's dope. The one issue with Fire Dragons, they're relatively short range. And this is gonna rely a lot on them to kill um, big stuff. And the Land Raider Demer is actually hard to get close to because they can't get close to it or they die to Overwatch. So they're kind of not that great in this particular matchup. Um, additionally, a lot of the heavy lifting in this one to kill landers has to be done by Kane. Um, and the aggressors are awesome at killing Kane. Um, and if Mark was managed to kill the avatar early, he's pretty set on his lander to surviving for whatever. The incarn can kill them, but it isn't actually that likely that she does. 
Okay. So pretty reasonably tight game here, 90-64. Congratulations to Mark for winning. All right, rounds two? What? I'm sorry. That was round two that I that uh, he played Eldar. He played Sean Reynolds, who I believe got like fourth. Um, oh, we went over this was ready. Yeah. Um, man, Mark went from double avatar into double avatar. Clearly he's got that game down pat because he won both times. So mad props to Mark. He played two really difficult lists. Good job there. Um, up next into Todd Cooker. Let's find out what Todd was running. I'm going to close a bunch of these tabs because who needs empty tabs? I'm going to slow down Chrome. Okay. Betty White. See, I love these list names. I used to always want to like put list names in my um, list for tournament back in 9th edition. But then I would feel bad because I was like, oh, it's unnecessary stuff. I need my opponent to read it. But now it's just part of it and it's great. We have Imperial Knights. We have Canis Rex, Double Crusader, an Errant, and a Kalidus. Um, so four bigs and a Kalidus. This list shoots really hard, but it doesn't fall back and do anything. And it only has five units. So if you kill like two units, it has a really hard time doing things. Um, and the Aggressor Brick, although it's a bunch of strength four, AP zero, damage one, um, actually will shred knights. Um, because you give it lethal hits on fives, um, and then it can charge in and kill them. Um, it has fully rolls to hit. It's just quite good. So, uh, I have the feeling, what was the score here? Yeah, 138. I think, unfortunately, um, the Imperial Eyes probably just didn't have the tools to deal with the Land Raiders. Um, because it's hard to kill them all at once, and, um, Mark can hide pretty well. Um, and then I could pop out and then kill a bunch of stuff, and then that's kind of the game. I really think that aggressive brick is probably pretty clutch here. Okay, uh, round four, we had Marker Tail into Jeffrey Kalodner. Um, I am really interested to see how this matchup went. And I kind of wish, um, I don't know if it was on War Games Live. I was really busy this weekend, um, so I wish I had uh, been able to watch it. But really close game here, 68-56. Uh, Jeff's an awesome player. Um, and he doesn't really have any awesome tools to killing AOC Land Raiders. Um, a lot of his stuff caps out at like strength nine, and especially if those Paragon War Suits died early, then there's really not an awesome way of killing um, those vehicles. That being said, um, it's a lot of things, and Mark doesn't actually have that many activations. Um, so if Jeff was able to keep him bogged down with like, here's five Battle Sisters, here's two Crusaders, here's one more to fire, he can keep the game really close, but I think he'd have a hard time winning it. Um, and this is one of those games, um, uh, it was on Joe's stream. Yeah, then I wish I'd watched it. I'll probably actually go back and take a peek at that game. Um, one of those games where I think Sisters really, they're, one of their weaknesses really shows through is that they really don't have a way of punching through into multiple tough things. They can handle one because you're like, here's a grenade strat, here's some mortals, here's the Paragon War suit. But the second one is quite difficult to kill. Um, so I think what probably ended up happening was Jeff had a lot of units, but in the end got ground down and got tabled by the Land Raiders. Last but not least, we have Mark into Tyler. I heard this game was wild. If someone in chat wants to tell me what happened in it, that would be awesome. Um, it came down to a failed charge. Yeah, really close games then. Um, so Tyler's we went over. This is the Curse Cultist list. Um, the one really interesting thing is that aggressors are quite good into Curse Cultists because um, the Curse Cultists give up blast times three because there's 16 models in the unit um, plus the commune. Um, but they just eat a bunch of saves and they don't actually have an armor save. So the AP on the aggressors even has pretty low, doesn't matter. Um, so sustained lethal fives with a million shots means they can actually really kill, um, aggressors quite quickly. Like aggressor can kill, um, a cursed cultist quite quickly. So this is, I'm also interested though, in that Tylos just really has ways of dealing with the, um, Land Raiders, right? Abaddon um, can uh, kill Land Raiders pretty well. So can the uh, Chosen here, the eight-man Chosen squad on Rhino. And the Forge Fiends, Undivided, really kill um, stuff. Yeah, apparently it was a emotional dice rolls and swings. That sounds like peak 40k. The best 40k games are the ones that are wild. Um, but that is um, the uh, more or less 
Mark's path to the top. So starting off with double, double, double avatar, then finishing on a really rockin' awesome CSM player. Um, fought a lot of, had, a, had, some, had some difficult, uh, difficult games there. So great job to Mark, obviously really earned it. Um, did an excellent job. Uh, I need to go to, okay, this is the button I need to click. Uh, awesome job. Let's see um, what uh, Jeffrey played. I'm probably gonna go through the top three, see what their paths to the top were, see what they played, and then um, I'm going to probably end up closing this off. So let's check out and see what did Jeffrey. So he played, um, this is the dude spam CSM list. So, wow, one point game. That's crazy. Sounds really knife edge. Um, I kind of imagine the amount of models on this table is insane. Um, and Jeff is really good at using his units to protect other units, like screening out with like 10 man sisters of battle. So target charge of things. And um, Ben's list doesn't have a lot of guns. There's a lot of shooting. Sorry, there's a lot of incidental shooting and a lot of uh, melee, but not a ton of like, I'm gonna shoot you in the face with the Forge Fiend kind of stuff. So obviously this game is super close, knife edge, but congrats to Jeff for pulling it out. Next uh, versus Black Templars. Let's see if this is a pretty standard Templar list. Um, Iron Storm Templars, okay. Oh, wow. That's a lot of vehicles. Yeah, okay. Uh, so all these vehicles get like random multi melts and stuff because they're Black Templars. Um, so if I had to make a guess here is that the vehicle, the Jacob probably didn't have the activations to kill all of Jeffrey's things because they're all hiding behind walls. They're kind of annoying. And then like, oh, all of those things are tagged and that vehicle is dead, but you can't shoot the squad back because they cut a really hard angle, things like that. All right, round three. Did I do it again? I did it again. Anyway, uh, just came into Benjamin was round three. His game into Joshua was round one, and he played Wilson for Hyperphase Crypt. I love these. Um, pretty standard Necron list with two squads of Lich Guard. Um, really interesting. That almost got to be tough for sisters. Because um, Necrons are really hard to kill, and they can just control the center and bully primary really well. And obviously, it was super close. So Jeff really has a lot of close games. And I think that's his player skill shining through uh, to overcome some of the inherent weaknesses of this faction. All right. Anyway, I went over this game already. My bad, you guys. Um, last game was Ritual Scrambler Fields. That one's weird. Um, okay, so Jeff lost to Mark Hurtel. Uh, we went over that one already. And then last, he played Guard. Let's see how many indirect pieces this Guard player had. Tank Commander, Tank Commander, Tank Commander, Basilisk, Hellhound, Lehman Russ, Lehman Russ, Lehman Russ, Lehman Russ, Lehman Russ. Tempest to Scion, Scion, Scion. Yeah, so I don't think there's enough indirect in this guard list to kill the sisters' models. They just kind of run around and score a million points. I highly doubt that guard player got tabled because the tanks are quite hard for sisters to kill. Um, but he had a hard time scoring points because sisters can be like, here's five battle sisters. That point's mine now. You don't get primary. Things like that. All right. So that is um, Jeff's path. So one tight loss and then a bunch of tight victories and some good victories. So really awesome job to Jeff for taking second place there. Um, and then last place is uh, Tyler. I wanna see what Tyler's pairings were and then we'll go ahead and close. You can type you guys, I promise you can't. I'm gonna go back to round one this time. Round one, oh, he played Lee Brady. I think I did pretty, he did pretty well as well himself. All right. Uh, Necrons, um, oh yeah, this is the, the Silent King Catan build. Um, pretty tight game here, nine point victory for CSM. One thing CSM have is the ability to kill Necrons. Um, Forge Fiends are pretty good into Warriors and things like that, Silent King. Um, Silent King's only toughness 10, so Forge Fiend kill him pretty, can kill him pretty well. Um, additionally, Abaddon can like kind of walk in and kill a bunch of characters with Epic Challenge if you can manage to see them or something like that. So CSM, I think, are favorite here, but uh, Lee obviously kept it really close because Necrons are pretty good. He seems to be a really good player. So awesome job to both of them. All right, round two. Tyler played TJ Lanigan. Wow, out of the frying pan and into the fryer. But this is a really solid win for Tyler against TJ. It was TJ running. I'm pretty sure GSC. Yeah, GSC. We got... 
an abominant, Acolyte Icon Ward, Acolyte Icon Ward, Primus, 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 Saboteur, Saboteur, two Bomba Squads, two, three Neophyte Squads, and the Aberrants, and three Cyclops Emolition Vehicles. I mean, this list explodes. Um, I got like a munitions factory or something. Um, I'm surprised to see this. TJ's an excellent player. Um, that being said, one thing I think Tyler really has going for them um, is that a bunch of Accursed Cultists are annoying for GSC to kill with a 4-up invuln, and they can be minus 1 to hit with the Nurgle Strap. And they are incredible screens. Just incredible screens. Um, so it's possible that Tyler was able to just, like, completely block off all the objectives. Maybe he went first and just ran forward. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm a little surprised at this one. But obviously Tyler's a really good player, and, you know, we all, we all have our rounds. Um... Oh, this round is Ritual Scrambler Fields. This game's also on stream. Um, that makes a lot more sense. Ritual Scrambler Fields. Yep, sorry, TJ. <laughs> okay. So if you don't know, um, this is the one where you summon objectives and also the one where you can't deep strike onto objectives. And TJ's playing GSC. So he can't ever hold primary. Ever. That's rough. Cool. That's bad. Oh, Lee is in chat. Hello. Um, he played Tyler round one. It came down to him going first and pushing up the board to get many people before I did. That, unfortunately, is the story of my life right now. Um, one of my major, um, as I've been developing uh, in Temp Edition a lot, one thing I don't like is how much first turn matters. Not just in the, like, rancid indirect wars you've been seeing, which I am very much at fault for, um, but also in the fact that whoever goes first able to come up and, like, take the middle before their opponent is able to and that's a large issue i find the games just don't go to turn five anymore so the the bottom turn primary matters a lot less all right um tyler um really tight game uh but beating uh andrew gagno also an amazing player also uh just is now on the u.s team also member art or so tyler come through two of us wow i gotta go get some revenge there um Andrew's running Tau. Let's find out what kind of Tau he was running. Fireblade, Fireblade, Farsight, Cold Star, Breacher, 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 Breacher. So four squads of Elvish and Breachers, and then two big units of Crisis Battle Suits. So that list shoots pretty hard. Um, that being said, the Nurgle Strat's really annoying for Tau because you have to get rid of really close, and the Chosen can get out and charge you. Um, but this is a really, really tight game. Probably really well played to both players. So good job, Tyler, for, for, uh, for winning this game. Round four, uh, Tyler beat Shuckman. Um, um, Shuckman doesn't actually have any awesome ways of killing the Accursed Cultists. They're really hard for Eldar to kill because Eldar have a lot of quality of shots, but not a lot of quantity of shots, and Accursed Cultists required both. Um, yeah, Ganyo's Tau is messed up. They're really good. Um, Ganyo's also just a really good player, and his army is also gorgeous. Um... So yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised at this result. Um, Curse Cultists are just really good into Eldar. Um, and also see a Summer General is quite good into Eldar. Um, Chosen can kill the Avatar, Abaddon can kill the Avatar, um, and Forge Fiends are really good into um, a lot of our profiles. So, standard, but you know, tight game, all things considered. All right, last, um, Tyler played Mark. This is our finals, a game we already went over. This one apparently was wild. Um, and I kind of wish I had seen it. It's always hard for me to like go back and watch things just because we get these pretty late on Sunday evening, the results, so there's not a lot of time between now and then. Um, but I suppose we probably, should probably do that. Anyways, um, that's going to go ahead and wrap up um, my our review on the Flames of Autumn GT. Um, good job to everyone involved. Congrats once again to Mark Hertel for taking it home, and to everyone who uh, stuck it out and played their best. You all are awesome and epic, and the reason we do this every day. Um, as always, if you want to find out more about Art of War and the War Room, you can go to thewarroom.vhx.tv. There's a three-day free trial. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and comment. It really helps the algorithm gods as they push us to the top. Um, uh, before I close things out, we have a two- a uh, pound super chat from George Hutley. Any idea when the Space Marine FAQ is out, leaders need fixing? I would love to tell you, I have not the faintest nor foggiest idea. 
but yeah, they do need fixing. Um, the uh, company heroes can be joined by like some things, but not others. But yes, no, I have I have absolutely no idea when it's going to be out. Um, but yeah, I will see you all next time. I hope you have a absolutely wonderful day. And as always, stay tuned and I will catch you later.